Okay, my name is Adejo Sunday, and we are here to continue our discussion on the course Political Behavior. In the previous session, we have tried to examine the concept of political behavior, and we have also tried to situate it within the context of Africa, Asia, Latin America, and of course of different continents to do a comparative analysis of the political behavior of people within the international system. I did say that the political behavior of people is motivated by certain factors. And I remember asking us several questions about the just concluded election in Nigeria. And of course, now why is it that Nigeria sometimes are sentimental? Why is it that sometimes we vote for people not because they have the capacity, but because they are of the same religion with us? Why is it that sometimes election in Nigeria is characterized by political violence? Why would some people be used as thugs? Why would they even agree to be used as thugs? And why should some people be interested in, you know, employing young people and use them to cause havoc within the country? This and many more are, is part of what the cause political uh, behavior is all about. So as part of, you know, uh, the cause uh, requirements to enhance our knowledge to understand political behavior is the topic uh, we are going to discuss today, political socialization and political culture because these two key these two variables are very key as far as our understanding of political behavior is concerned political socialization and political culture so let's take them one after the other political socialization or socialization sometimes people say people don't behave in a very people behave in an abnormal way there is no behavior that one will put up that has nothing to do with the socialization of the person. No behavior. Whatever you know today, whatever attitude you display today is a product of the kind of socialization that you have. Whether you are a Christian, you are a Muslim, or you are a pagan, or you are an African, or an American, your behavior has a lot to do with your socialization. The question is, what is socialization? Socialization is a process of acquiring skills knowledge. But it's important to also say that socialization as a concept does not have a single definition. There are uncountable definitions. A lot of people view socialization as a process of learning. And of course, the argument has always been that learning is a continuous process. Socialization starts from childbirth to adulthood to maturity and even until death, one will continue to socialize. Socialization is a process of acquiring skills, acquiring knowledge. And so when we say political socialization, it therefore means that it is a process of learning, of acquiring skills and knowledge about politics in your society. What you know today, what you think today, as far as politics is concerned, your perspective politically is a product of the kind of political socialization that you have. It was Otite and Odemwa who define socialization as a process whereby man who is a biological being becomes a social being. And I find that definition very interesting. Yes, we are all biological beings. But how comes we are not behaving in response to our biological makeup? There are so many things that you should do ordinarily because you are a product of a biological makeup. Shouldn't you just see somebody on the road and want to you know, want to harass the person sexually? Why don't we do that? Because you have acquired a social status. There are norms and values that you have acquired over time that tells you that these ways are not societally acceptable. And that is where socialization becomes pivotal and germane to every society. There are values, there are norms, there are traditions, there are codes of conduct that people acquire as far as their society is concerned. It was of this that made uh, Robert in his theory uh, of anomy to talk about anomy as being perpetrated when people want to achieve goals contrary to societal laid down procedures. He called that anomy. Robert K. Martins. Beautiful theory. And so, socialization also tells you that when you have goals to achieve, you must achieve those goals through means that are acceptable by the society. And that's what socialization is all about. Acquiring norms, acquiring skills, acquiring values about your society, about human beings, about ethics, about codes of conduct. 
It is a process of learning. And like I said, learning is a continuous process. Okay, I haven't said that. Socialization and political culture go hand in hand. If socialization is a process of acquiring skills, acquiring values, then political culture can also be acquired through the process of socialization. What you know, what you think, what you believe about politics in your country, or about international politics, is what you have learned over time. Political socialization. Okay, but political socialization itself is a product of certain agents. There are agents of socialization. There are variables, there are factors that determine what you know. There are factors that have enhanced, that have contributed in your personality development. And these are what we call agents or drivers or precipitators of political socialization. One of those agents is the family. The family is an agent of socialization. Many of what you learn starts from the family. And so the family becomes that first platform that you have a contact with to begin to learn the do's and don'ts, to begin to learn certain values, certain skills, certain behavioral pattern. The family is an agent of socialization. And that is why today when we talk about counter-terrorism in Nigeria, a lot of persons have blamed the issue of terrorism on the family. That it is the failure of the family that has increased the rate of moral decadence. It is the failure of the family that has increased the rate of terrorist activities, armed robbery, kidnapping, and all of those social misdemeanor within the society. It means that the family in contemporary time is therefore giving negative socialization or the family has failed to perform her role of socializing children who should become, you know, people that the society and the state to be proud of. The family is an agent of socialization. As a child, you begin to emulate, you begin to imitate what you see your parents do. When your parents take you to, you begin to follow suit. And so to become a good Christian or a good Muslim is a product of the kind of socialization that the family has given. To become a good citizen is also a product of the kind of socialization that the family is given. And so the family is very key as far as socialization is concerned. Another agent of socialization is the school. The school is a moral, you know, moral building block. The school is a formal institution responsible for transmitting knowledge onto people. And so the school becomes an agent of political socialization. Today in our schools we do civic education as a topic or as a, as a subject. They do government, they do history, we do economics. All this knowledge is meant to socialize people, to socialize children as they grow. And so the school plays a very important role as far as the transmission of knowledge, the transmission of culture, the transmission of values, the transmission of belief system is concerned. Because Nigeria has been faced with issues of political instability, the university has introduced peace and conflict studies as part of the curriculum of the university. Now, the idea is to socialize young people to know about conflict and to know about the factors that brings about conflict and to also help them to see how they can contribute towards conflict resolution. And that makes the school a very important, you know, agent of political uh, socialization. Then the mass media, very important agent of socialization. The, the, the television, the radio, and all of that, the newspaper. All these are agents of socialization. And the most interesting thing is that today we are now faced uh, with a trend where social media is gradually taking over the role of the traditional media. People now on their phones can access information beyond their imagination. And so it tells you the role that the media can play in socialization. However, because of the rate at which social media has gone or is going, we are beginning to also have some degree of negative socialization as the social media is now used sometimes as a platform to transmit hate speeches. People now talk about other ethnic groups, 
other religion in a manner that can instigate political violence. And so the media plays a role, whether positive or negative. And so the state also must begin to ensure that uh, some regulatory frameworks are put in place not to abuse the mass media or the social media you know, as a platform, as an agent of political, you know, political socialization. When you see these politicians campaigning, you watch them on TV, you hear them on radio, and by there you are getting knowledge, political knowledge, political values, and all of that. The peer group or age group is another agent of political socialization. Birds of the same feathers will always flock together, and so sometimes there's what we call peer, uh, what we call peer pressure. Some people sometimes, because of the kind of friends they have, they are pressurized to adopt a particular behavior that they ordinarily would not. For instance, there are people who are decent. Once they get to the university, they begin to associate with different kinds of people, and gradually they become notorious. What that means is that they have become socialized by peer group. And so it is very important, too, that we mind the kind of people we keep as friends because this can contribute as far as socialization is concerned. And sometimes it could be negative. The church and the mocks, these are religious, you know, organizations, and they play an Im Im immense role as far as socialization is concerned. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, we now have an antithetical relationship between the church and the mocks, which is not supposed to be so. People preach things about Islam or about Christianity that are not factual, but just to promote hate or hatred. And this is really one of the reasons why you now have Islamophobic speeches and all of that within the social media and even in the, you know, the print media at large. The church is an agent of socialization. The mock is an agent of socialization. And these two are very, very important as far as transmitting knowledge, transmitting values, and helping in, in shaping behavioral pattern. They are very, very important. And lastly, we talk about political parties. Yes, political parties are very important agents of political socialization. And we see that a lot in times of campaign, manifestos, rallies, and all of that, where political parties are you know, uh, telling people what programs they intend to do if given opportunity. We see political parties playing the role of watchdogs, criticizing government in power. And by all of that, they are contributing to the whole issue of political socialization. And so when we meet in the next class, we will do look at critically political culture. We now try to show the nexus between political socialization and political culture. So I will meet in the next session. Do have a blessed day.